This is the Wealth Ability for CPAs show. Better clients, better practice, better life. Here's Tom Wheelwright. Welcome to the Wealth Ability Show for CPAs, where we're always discovering how to build better clients, a better practice, and a better life. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright, your host, founder, and CEO of the Wealth Ability Network. So have you ever stopped to think, why isn't my phone ringing off the hook with people who want to be my clients? Today, we're going to discover what you're missing, what it is that you can do to really enhance that branding to such a point where people are calling you. And uh, we have a very uh, tremendous guest, Brendan Kane, who wrote the book Hook Point, How to Stand Out in a Three-Second World. And Brendan, it is great to have you on the Wealth Ability Show for CPAs. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a true pleasure to connect with you and everybody that's tuning in for this. So um, tell us, if you will, you know, how do you get into this whole idea of branding, the whole idea of, you know, getting out there in the digital world? Yeah, so I got into this, uh, I initially wanted to be a film producer, so I went to film school, hoping they would teach me about business, and I quickly realized they don't teach you anything about business in film school, uh, so I figured the best way to learn about business is start your own, and the most cost-efficient way at the time, and still holds true today, is to start internet companies. So I created a few internet companies while I was going to college, really just to learn and experiment. And then when I moved to LA to pursue a career in film, this was back in 2005, it's when uh, the entertainment industry and much of the world started to reawaken to digital after the dot-com bust. Uh, so I started by uh, building digital divisions for movie studios. And you're really helping figure out how we take a core asset, a single piece of content that we spent tens of millions, in some cases, hundreds of millions of dollars to produce. And now we needed to get people to know about this brand that in most cases didn't exist. Uh, and we didn't have years or decades to do it. We had months to do it. So very quickly, I had to learn how to harness the power of digital, social media, internet traffic to take an unknown piece of content and turn it into something that was exciting and interesting enough that they would purchase a movie ticket to go see. So that's really how I got started in, in all of this. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And so we're going to give you a real challenge today, Brendan, because we're going to take maybe one of the most unexciting, at least in the public's eyes, of uh, professions in the world, the CPA profession, and talk about branding and how to make and how to stand out really because when you have so many i mean there's thousands and thousands of cpas and clients have no idea that there's any difference right they think uh, it's like going to the dentist i mean is they're all the same right so um first question i have is what is um if i could ask you this brendan what's your definition of a brand i would say it's something that people care about i mean the world that we come in in our focus is less about building a brand. It's more about how do we get the general audience to care about what we have to say? And you started off by saying, well, how do we take an unsexy thing and make it interesting? Well, the good news is anything can go viral. And I can point to many different examples. Uh, for example, there is a YouTube account called Clear Tax Value. And it's all about taxes. It has over a million subscribers and on average generates three to 500,000 views a video. And they've had several um, videos with a million plus. Um, there's a luxury real estate agent that consistently goes viral. There is a, uh, a young content creator named Graham Stephan that teaches finance to millennials. And that goes viral. Uh, there's a doctor called Dr. Mike that has turned the medical profession into virality. So. I first want to say that it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what your background is, what your product or niche is, you can make it go viral. And again, what does that mean? Like, how do we actually achieve that? So in order to really break that down and understand it, we have to start with the world that we live in. So I started in 2005 in social media, the very earliest stages of it. And I remember a press release of when MySpace hit its first million users. That was a big thing. 
You right. fast forward to, to today, there's now 4 billion people on social media creating 200 billion pieces of content every single day. So one of the, the factors that people don't consider when creating content or trying to brand themselves in this new digital world is the algorithms. The algorithms control reach and distribution of content. And the algorithms fundamentally only have a single goal, and that is retention, keeping people on these platforms longer. The longer people stay on these platforms, the more ads they can serve, thus the more revenue that they generate. There's a big myth out there that the algorithms suppress your reach in order to get you to pay for it. That's just simply not the case. Because if that was the case, nobody would ever go viral. Nobody would ever get that reach and engagement. So the algorithms are a huge shift in the way that we have to communicate. And because the algorithms want content that they can see to as many people as possible and hold that attention so that they can serve more ads, that's our job in creating content. That is our job in creating brands, is how do we make our content interesting to the general population, to the general world. So again, that's where like Clear Tax Value did an amazing job. Now, what caused him to go viral? He, at the time of COVID, he started releasing videos on stimulus checks and talking about that because at the time, that was a big sure. level of interest. They may have no interest in taxes at all, but because he's playing on a big pain point, a big thing that's interesting to the general population, the algorithms see that people are, are stopping to watch that content and watching it for a long period of time. So your first goal as a content creator to get, is to get out of the old mindset is that I'm going to create a very specific piece of content or messaging for a very specific person. Now, I'm not saying you don't serve your core client in the communication. It's about how do I serve the widest audience to make them care, but in addition playing to my target audience. So I mentioned the luxury real estate agent. So this guy sells 10, 20, $30 million properties. His target audience is very small, but he understands these principles. So what does he do? He creates a video on, I'm going to take you on a tour of a $7 million closet. I'm going to take you on a tour of a $250 million ranch. So what he's doing there is anybody would want to see that $7 million closet, that $250 million ranch. So the algorithm see that he's holding that attention. So they'll serve it to millions and millions of people. Now he knows all I need is 1% to be my core target. Right. And I will make more money than other real estate agents because they're not following this principle. And he's even said that he has sold 10, 20, $30 million properties off a single YouTube video because he's providing value. He's building trust and credibility with it. So that's the big paradigm shift that people need to have in terms of creating content for this new world we find ourselves in. So, so how do you figure that out? I mean, you know, I'm thinking of our audience and CPAs and, you know, we're, as, as a group, we're pretty clueless to this stuff. So how do you figure out what does, you know, what does that general population want to see? What is it they want? What is it that is interesting to them? Well, I mean, there's a, a number of different ways that you can go about it. I mean, our so we have a viral content engineering process that we've built and it's backed by 60 billion views and hundred million followers and a billion in revenue. And the core principle and foundation of that process is research. So we are always going out into the ecosystem and yes, we'll look at your competition, but typically your competition is not doing a good job, right? There's very few people just in general, not just in this industry that are struggling. Um, so what we do is we look at the whole ecosystem. And I just gave you a few examples of people going sure. viral. So we look at the whole ecosystem and see um, what we call performance drivers. We look at the things, the storytelling mechanisms that cause content to go viral and also the things that decrease from it. And oftentimes it's not about the content because, for example, I, I broke down an example of luxury real estate estate agent. I talked about clear tax value. Another guy that talks about finances, they may have completely different content than what you want to express. But what we look at is the delivery of that content. How are they delivering their message? How are they structuring their storytelling? That's the first place to start. And oftentimes what you'll see or recognize, you'll start creating ideas based off of that. 
So for example, with clear tax value of him playing off the stimulus check, now I can look at it from a CPA's perspective of what is going on in the world today that is causing a lot of news, that's causing people stress or pain or things of that nature that I can wrap my message, my brand around and deliver it to people. So just to answer your, 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 your question simply is we always start with the research to inform our decisions of how we contextualize messages to go viral. Got it. So you mentioned um, something I think is critical um, to, to deliver is how to deliver the message and the storytelling. So, and you know, how you actually go about that storytelling. So can you give us two or three, you know, ideas of what are we looking for in that storytelling um, process? Yeah. So there's many different things. Um, again, we talk about performance drivers, the things that cause content to perform at the highest levels and decrease it to the lowest levels. And there's so many nuances in that. So it could be pacing. It could be tonality, the editing, your thumbnails, your headlines, all of these things take into consideration your content's ability to perform at the highest levels. Now, obviously we've talked about hooks and hook points the things that grab that attention. So in the case of luxury real estate, I'm gonna take you on a tour of a $7 million closet. I'm gonna take you on the tour of a $250 million home. In the case of clear tax value, I am going to give you valuable information of when you're gonna get your next stimulus check, how much that stimulus check could be. So that's grabbing that attention, getting people to stop to say, okay, this person has a unique perspective on something that is interesting or valuable or entertaining to me. But once you have that attention, you have to be able to hold that attention. So that's where it comes into how are you expressing that content? You know, what is your tonality? Do people like you? What are the facial expressions, the body cues, things of that nature? What is the background of your video? All of those things come into play for your ability to create content at the highest level. So um, can you guys give us like a couple of examples of uh, like what's a good background, what's a bad background? What's a, you know, what's, what's a good, um, what's a good hook? What's a bad hook? Okay, well, we'll start with the latter. So a bad hook is something that somebody says that you already know essentially what they're going to say. So for example, taxes, you know, I, you have to pay your taxes by April 15th. If you don't, you'll, this will happen. It's like, even if you have a unique perspective on that, yeah. people are going to scroll past it. They're not going to click it. So you've got to be very careful that even if there is a tremendous amount of competition in your space and every industry has a tremendous amount of competition, sure. you're not saying the same thing in the same way as everybody else. So for me, for example, we're social media experts. You type social media into Google, you're going to get billions of results, probably the same with CPA. Yep. So what did I do with my first book? I did an experiment on myself where I generated a million followers in 30 days and I did it purely from a hook. So that became my first book, 1 million followers, how I built a massive social audience in 30 days. And nobody had expressed that. Now there's plenty of people out there that will teach you about creating content, how to generate followers and things of that nature. But because I contextualized what I was trying to convey in a unique and different way, it gets people to stop and pay attention. So that's a huge mistake that people make is they know they have a different perspective than other people in their industry, but they're expressing it in the same way. Because just understand the pattern of using social media. You're scrolling, you're scrolling. And if you don't disrupt that pattern to get people to stop to scroll, then the algorithms are going to suppress your reach. So, so you're looking at what, what would catch your attention? What, what would get you to stop scrolling? Yeah, absolutely, is recognizing those patterns. Now, I'm not talking about clickbait here. So we have three core pillars to a successful hook point, two successful content going at viral. The first one is grabbing attention. So if we don't stop that attention, if we don't um, uniquely... Uh, position our hook point, our ability that our information is going to be different, unique, something they haven't seen before, then you're not grabbing that attention. You're not rising above that noise. 
Then the second core pillar is holding that attention. If you don't hold that attention, then what you just grabbed has no substance to it. You're never going to get to the point where you can express your value, your zone of genius to get somebody to um, follow your account, share your content, fill out a lead form, book a call with you, whatever that may be. And the third core pillar is monetizing that attention is you have to have a fundamental business strategy and process in place to take the attention that you have and translate that into commerce for your business so that it's sustainable for you. Now, that doesn't mean that every piece of content should be selling something, but there needs to be a fundamental business strategy in place. So again, those three core pillars have to come into play. If you don't grab that attention in those first few seconds, you're never going to get the ability to hold that attention. If you do grab the attention, but you don't hold it with your ability to tell a compelling story or the message that you want to... convey, then that attention drops off. If you grab that attention and hold that attention, but it doesn't translate to your business goals, then it falls apart. And that's important because other people will try to use clickbait or they'll try and use something that's not correlated to their brand at all Mm -hmm. to go viral, but then it doesn't translate to you and your value and your service. So that's why these three key pillars have to play together. So so how often do you think that 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 your social media needs to have a call to action of some sort. You know, when you talk about monetizing it, how often is it a call to action? How often it is, is it more PR? Well, there are certain content creators um, that do a very great job and they have a call to action in every video, but it's kind of authentic to the content that they're delivering. So you first have to, again, do the research and study how people are doing it. So, You can have a call to action in every video if it plays to the story that you're telling, if it doesn't feel over the top, if it doesn't feel like you're trying to sell somebody on something. So it's less about how many times do you use a call to action and more about how are you integrating a call to action that feels like it plays with the story or you're integrating it in such a way that the the viewer knows, hey, this is a part of the value they're providing to me. And I'm going to go along with it because they did it in an interesting way, a fun or playful way, things like that. So again, there's never like a rule of thumb with those things. It's again, how do you look at the research? How are people doing it successfully? And then how can you learn to integrate that into your content? So how do you go about, you know, CPAs are pretty good researchers as a, a general population. How do you go back? What kind of research are you doing? Where are you doing that research? Yeah, so we have a internal research team and we do it every day. And the easiest place to start is just be social media and consume content. The real way to get good at research is understanding those performance drivers. So one of the things that we do um, for our clients, and we have a whole um, community based upon this, where we do what's called gold silver. So we may take a viral content creator like Clear Tax Value or um, Graham Stephan or Ryan Serhant or anyone and go through their content, look at their highest performers, look at their middle tier performers, and then also look at their lowest tier performers. Because most people will look at somebody that's had success on social media and then they just look at that success and be like, oh, they know what they're doing. So I'm just going to emulate everything they do. But in reality, there are key things that they do that really drive that performance. And there's key things that detract from that performance. So in order to really understand and do the research effectively, you have to look at it from the high performers, the mid performers, and the low performers to really dissect what those performance drivers are. Then additionally, we will not just do this for individual accounts, we'll do this for content formats. So maybe we take an explainer video uh, format, or we look at a specific type of TikTok format or Instagram reel format, and then we will look at it across multiple accounts. And again, we'll look at it from that gold, silver, bronze mentality. So it's really the first place to start is just start consuming content and looking at it from that perspective. And then you can dive deeper and deeper as you get better at that research process. I, I think that's a big point. I think a lot of um, CPAs probably don't consume 
um, the the content, and so they don't have any ideas. And I think that's a most company. brands don't. Yeah, it and if they and sense. if they are consuming content, they're doing it passively, not actively. Mm -hmm. Right, that makes sense. So you you also talk um, in your book about attention release. Um, you know, and when you're talking about storytelling, and we get back to storytelling and having attention release as well as the hook point. What does that even mean? Well, it's you look at like a movie storytelling structure. It's not there's not like a, you know, even if you watch a horror movie, it's not like they have a tension the entire movie where you're scared out of your mind the entire movie because that would be too overwhelming. Right. Same thing in a comedy movie. It's not like it's joke, 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 joke. You have to have the tension, release the tension, have the tension, release the tension to keep people engaged. Because if we have just a single and I'm sure everybody knows somebody is somebody that has a single tone to them. It gets very boring. It gets very monotonous. And thus you lose that attention. You may be able to grab it, but then you lose it. So just knowing that you have these ebbs and flows to how you 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 tell your story. And those the most effective communicators on the planet. You see this. They don't have a single tone. They 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 change their inflection. They change their pacing. They change all of those things. So if you set tension, you need to release that tension. And then you set that tension again and release that tension. So it's just a lot of the psychology that goes into effective communication. Got it. So um, I don't, I think a lot of CPAs are a little, they, they may not feel comfortable storytelling, even though they're telling stories every day to their clients. Um, I think we do a lot of storytelling that we don't know that we don't actually realize that we're telling stories. And so is, do you have good resources, some good ideas for how to actually learn that? Because it is a skill set, how to learn that skill set. Yeah, again, it comes down to research, is to learn from others. And I would say that everybody, you know, CPAs are storytellers, because when you're working with clients, even through numbers, you're telling mm -hmm. a story. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, this has been fantastic. And uh, Brendan, um, besides going to your book, uh, hook point and how to stand out in a three second world. Um, any other resources that you'd like us to go to? Yeah, they can go to hookpoint.com. Um, we have a free video. You can download our deck as a reference. And if people are interested in, in working with our team to develop a custom social media strategy for them, they can, uh, book a call with our team. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Any, uh, any final words, any final uh, thoughts or ideas here that uh, CPAs ought to be keeping uh, a mind about? I would just go back to the first thing that we talked about is anything can be made to go viral. It doesn't matter what your industry or niche is or how boring you think it may be. You can make it interesting uh, for the widest possible audience and scale through it. No, I love that. And I, I can I can attest to that. We did, we had a TikTok video go viral um, on, on Trump, why Trump didn't pay taxes. That was one of those hot button issues a few years ago. And uh, we, I was, it's amazing to watch when it happens. Okay. And then I think that what's important is, is to recognize that, look, there are topics that people are interested in. We may not, we may not realize they're interested in because we're so deep in them. And so I think bringing those, uh, bringing those topics out and making them interesting, I think that's a great skill set. So thank you for that, Brendan. Yeah. And I would also say is, I don't think it was just the topic. It was the way that you delivered that topic that contributed to that virality. Because I guarantee there is, if you type Trump not paying taxes, I'm sure there are thousands or tens of thousands of other videos that didn't go viral with that. So just keep that in mind. And that's why we focus more on the way that we're contextualizing our content, expressing that content to increase the level of virality. Awesome. So uh, once again, it's Brendan Kane and. Uh... It is uh, Hook Point and How to Stand Out in a Three-Second World, hookpoint.com. And Brenda, great to have you. Just remember, everyone, that, you know, when we when we start thinking about branding, when we start thinking about um, having hooks, this is not disingenuous. This is actually who we are. Uh, I, I loved what you said, Brendan, that we need to be genuine about it, that as long as you're genuine and you're actually serving them and you have a you know, you have a plan in place and you do the research, what uh, you're always going to end up with is, uh, I think, better clients, better practice and a better life. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, Brendan. 
You've been listening to the Wealth Ability for CPA show. Better clients, better practice, better life. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.